Welcome everybody to another episode of the On Their Way Up podcast. It's a podcast about up and coming entertainers and the up and coming days of established entertainers. My name is Spencer Gordman. I'm a stand-up comedian. And today uh, I'm doing a podcast first because I'm joined with not one, but four guests, the four incredible musicians uh, from Adam and the Metal Hawks. These guys uh, started up in 2019 and have since kind of taken over the the rock game a little bit by storm, especially on social media. They got a million Instagram followers, 3.2 million TikTok followers, another 100,000 plus uh, YouTube subscribers and and just killing it on the uh, the digital element and their music uh, as well is fantastic. You can listen to the 2020 uh, self-titled debut album, Adam and the Metal Hawks, wherever you listen to music, as well as the 2021 singles, uh, Backwards and Bad Guy. Uh, these guys are awesome. I'm super excited to talk to them. Thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, guitarist Johnny Berry, bassist Ryan DeVersa, uh, frontman Adam Izagalian, and drummer Griffin McCarthy. What's going on, guys? Hey, going on, Wait, having us. Yeah, thank you guys for being on. I uh, I was talking with Daniel. I don't know, like, uh, is he like your agent or manager? But he said you guys were coming back. From, I... He said you guys were coming back from Thanks, Canada. Guys. Yes, we're actually just in Canada for a movie premiere. Uh, an mm -hmm. independent film used one of our songs in the movie as a as a horror film, and it was really cool. Uh, it's called Here for Blood. And they're trying to pitch it around to maybe some streaming services. Uh, but keep an eye out because it was a really good movie. And uh, our songs are in the cool part of it. So That's awesome. That would suck if your songs are in the shitty part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so the, the thing I really like about doing these kind of interviews is the whole story behind it. So like kind of individually, uh, where did you guys start with music? kind of before you got introduced to the band. So I'll start with um, uh, Johnny, because you were the uh, kind of first member of the band. So how did you get into music? Um, I really have to give it up to my dad with this one. I mean, he's like a huge rock and roll fan. And since he was young, he was always listening to rock and roll. So uh, he started listening to rock and roll. And ever since I was born, I was like basically born and forced to listen to rock and roll and do something with rock. So um, and then I started playing Guitar Hero, which is, you know, everyone knows Guitar Hero little plastic guitar and then right when i was about eight years old i got a guitar for christmas and then ever since then i've been playing guitar what type of guitar acoustic electric it was an electric i don't even know the name of it i should really know the name of it but it was a crap little hundred dollar guitar like a starter guitar mm -hmm. and then uh yeah that's pretty much it what like i mean i had a very my dad doesn't play music at all but def i called his car the uh rock indoctrination center because <laughs> his rule was uh, I got to choose the radio station, but he got to choose the volume. <laughs> so it's pretty much like rush Always, or bust, you know? Yeah. <laughs> all level 10. There you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and then it kind of, you started uh, the Metal Hawks when you were 10, right? So that kind of, you just did guitar up until then. Right. And I just found some like classmates in our school that was also kind of into rock. And I was like, listen, let's put a band together. At and 10. Then, Ryan was through a talent show so we did the metal hawks with two other friends then he was just doing a singing thing by himself and I was like he needs to be in our band like I'll kick anyone else out for this kid to be in our <laughs> band what happened so then, <laughs> yeah, what Ryan happened. how'd you get like started into music and then kind of introduced to those guys I would say like me getting started with music it pretty much happened before I was born like my parents were both music fans and stuff like that. They actually met at a recording studio back in the 80s where my wow. dad would rehearse at the studio and my mom was working there for a while and that's how they met. But, you know, like, even when my mom was fighting with me, she would be playing, like, Zeppelin onto my belly and stuff like that. There's even, there's even like, home video footage of me, like, taking a nap as a baby and my dad is blasting, like, poison on his stereo or whatever. But, <laughs> I mean, for me, music has always been in my singer obviously i got into guitar and singing when i was in my teens obviously i met up with johnny you know i don't think i can ever imagine my life without me it's just always been a part of me did you uh always start off on bass or what was the first instrument for you he's having some connection uh -oh. issues <laughs> frozen he's going to bed having a stroke my first instrument 
Oh. <laughs> I'm literally Good having job. a stroke. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to crop all this out, right? Fuck no. <laughs> No, it's part of, part of the glamour. <laughs> I want to get the real story of who Adam and the Metal Hawks are. Yeah, even the shitty Wi-Fi connection. No, yeah, give it that. No, we, we're is, not... it, is, it, is it better now? Though? Yeah, it is. So, did you start off on right, bass? Cool. No, actually, I started out. I started out as a drummer. Actually, I picked up drums when I was like three years old, and I played it all throughout my school years and stuff like that. And then I started getting into guitar and singing when I was in my teens. And bass came about because I was in Metal Hawks with Johnny and all that. And we could not find a bass player for the life of us. So eventually I just said, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to play bass. And it kind of just took off from there. What Adam took over, I'm just like, hey, well, I guess I'm the bass player now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, makes sense. But find a niche, you know. Yeah, uh, I feel like bass. I feel like bass is an instrument that kind of falls into people's lap a lot of the times, but if you're passionate about it enough, you can still make it cool. Oh yeah. Like a lot of my favorite, like rock guys are bassists. Like, you know, Getty Lee, I know you're a, a Rush fan. Ged, yeah. Yes. Ged's the best. I had to show this off. Ged this led. is the poster right across from my room. Uh, right that across from my bed. Awesome. Room. Yeah. Love Rush. Yeah. I know Griffin, you're a Rush fan too. I was like, it's I hard, hard to imagine uh, too many drummers and bassists that aren't a fan of Rush. Like, it just kind of comes with the territory. Yeah, it's part of the package deal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So then, uh, Adam, are you are you the oldest person in the band, or is it uh, Griffin? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the oldest. You, I'm you're the, the... grand... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so did how, not... did, how did you get started into uh, singing? Or just music in general? Did you play any instruments as well? Well, so I started kind of... Uh again through through my parents uh but more on the th musical theater side actually uh and as music was always playing in the car my dad was a big like beatles fan so i got some of that and then uh through middle school and high school i would do the school play uh and of course once guitar hero and rock band came out i also jumped in there i was having a blast on there and it kind of opened me up to the rock genre and uh, I was able to sing a lot of these songs that normally people couldn't. So it was kind of fun to uh, get the rock screams in there and everything. And once I went on American Idol, uh, I couldn't do like, you know, musicals in there. So I had to do <laughs> classic rock jams like Twisted Sister and stuff like that, that that American Idol probably isn't very used to. Uh, and uh and just kind of fell in love with rock and roll. It's just such a good genre. Like, you know, you, you feel the energy of the crowd and like screaming and guitar solos and drum solos. And it's just crazy. Like it's, it's the best genre for sure. So you came into rock like well after you started performing and, and singing. That's really interesting. Was there yeah. a learning curve, do you think, of like how to sing like these rock guys? Or what did you take from the theater side? and apply to rock singing? Well, I think uh, the from the theater side, I, I also played uh, the trumpet uh, in middle school, high school. Uh, and so I feel like that and musical theater kind of helped me train my lungs to have that power that's necessary for uh, a good rock front man. Uh, and I guess, I don't know, my voice kind of lend itself naturally to that kind of gravelly, uh, screamy type stuff <laughs> so kind of just the pieces kind of just lined up that's awesome and yeah i saw some of your uh american idol clips that must have been i mean just so crazy i i am willing to bet a lot of fun but was it like more stressful than fun or how would you kind of compare the uh the good and the bad of that experience because you went pretty far too i mean you definitely weren't like the uh, the one and done type of guy yeah so i made it to the top 12 and uh, it was definitely more fun than stressful, I'd say. Uh, you know, obviously plenty of stress involved, but uh, I kind of looked at it as like, I'm just seeing how far I could go. You know, I, I got a little like golden ticket from uh, something in Disney World that was like the American Idol experience. And oh. it was kind of a mini American Idol contest type thing uh, that I had won. So I got this little ticket that I didn't have to wait in line 
for the real American Idol auditions. So oh. that's the only reason why I auditioned because I, I wasn't going to wait in that big line. I was like, screw that. <laughs> so because I could skip the line, I was like, all right, let me just try it. And then I went to the next round and I was like, all right, well, I, I got this far, whatever. We'll see how it goes. And then I got to the next round. So I was just in it for the fun. And, you know, they, they flew you all around to L.A. and Hollywood and uh, paid for your hotel and everything. So it was just a lot of fun. And, of course, meeting all these super talented uh, vocalists, uh, you know, they're they're all amazing and talented. And it didn't really feel too much like you were directly competing with them because of the different genres and vocal styles. It really just felt like everybody was just putting their best performance out there and it was up to America and the judges to decide and it wasn't up to us to really like fight amongst ourselves. So it was a really good time. That's awesome. And I totally can understand like the stress and the tension is manufactured a good deal. Like, right. you know, that's what gets views. <laughs> yep. um, so then Griffin, you were the most recent addition to the band. Uh, so you probably had like a longer music career beforehand. So what was, kind of starting from the beginning up until now, kind of what was music like for you? Um, my parents were music are musicians, so I grew up in a musical household. I always had a piano available, instruments available. So I picked up piano first, and then eventually I took to drums from a young age. I was like three when I started playing drums. And then, you know, eventually I got lessons and went on from there. But uh, I start. I, I think I joined my first band when I was twelve, and from there I started playing out live and stuff. And I just I've been in so many bands before. I joined these guys, such so local yokel stuff, and it was kind of a uh, trial and error. And you know, I just uh, after honing my skills and just finding what worked for me, I found something that really worked with these guys. And just I mean, everybody compliments each other so well. In this band, it's, it's really awesome. If I've learned one thing from talking to you guys, it's that three-year-olds like hitting shit together. <laughs> That's like all you guys like. When I was three, I picked up drums because I like smashing spoons into shit. And it's like, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, does. What do you think, Griffin, that you took away from the other bands that you were in? Like kind of the lessons and whatnot. I think a big part of this communication. I think um, if a band doesn't communicate, then nothing will ever get done. So... You have to know what to what to do and be able to establish a, a plan with everybody on board. Everybody has to know what the plan is. If everybody, everyone, in my experience, a lot of people had different plans. A lot of people had different priorities. So nothing ever really came to fruition the way we all dreamed it could. Because everyone can have dreams. But you have to be able to work. And you have to be able to put those thoughts into reality. And I think that I've learned how to do that in a way that puts me above most places. And I've luckily found people that are the exact same. So it's all worked out. That's great. I mean, you kind of have, uh, I mean, uh, Johnny, you're like, you started the metal Hawks when you were 10 and have kind of ridden it the whole time. And then Griffin, right. you were the, the late edition. And it's cool that you guys all still are able to find like a cohesive kind of plan forward and way of going about things. Um, so then, uh, Ryan, you got added, I think you said when you were 14, uh, from the talent show, um, what was the experience like? Was that your first experience being in a band? And what was that kind of like with, uh, you and Johnny starting this thing together? It's been a great experience. It's been eight years now since I've been in this band. Um, like, I was doing a singing thing like Johnny was talking about with just a friend of mine or whatever. And Johnny was in this little band of 12 year olds called Metal Hawks. And even them, they threw t-shirts out to the crowd. And my mom was one of the people that caught the shirts. So if that's not destiny, I don't know what is. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's been a ride though. We, and we've been through a lot, you know, we've, we've been like a local band, like just up and trying to do the best we can with what we had. Like probably some of the worst venues imaginable oh, yeah. from where we're from, but you know it's it's all part of the long game, and it's a lot about you know just building character and stuff like that, and that's why we're incredibly thankful to be where we are today because a lot of other bands just don't get to the level that we do, and we're always appreciative of that. So, 
because I started stand up when I was 16. So like for me talking to other people who started when they were young, it's most of the venues are they either serve alcohol or they're just straight up bars. Like, right. Like, were you guys able to still get in and kind of navigate that a little bit? I mean, I imagine being 13, 14, like how, how was that even possible? <laughs> Well, well, we did it. I mean, <laughs> we had a couple. We had a couple of promoters that we worked with that, I guess, we were able to just work us into a lot of these venues. Like where you said, were just straight up bars, or they just, you know, they just served alcohol, like you said. But a lot of people were just cool, like because we were we were good boys. We weren't gonna drink or anything. Yeah, I was like or eleven. That's crazy thinking about it. We just say we're a part yeah. of the family too. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're <laughs> half. Yeah. It's, yeah, dude, you were playing bars and you were like 12. How crazy is that, Johnny? That is crazy. Dude, you were half the legal drinking age playing in these bars. <laughs> half a beer. That's what that means. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, when you guys were growing up in, in uh, especially in high school, like kind of being in bars all the time and, and having this passion project, um, do you think that really shaped your experience in high school? Or like, how do you think that did? Or how do you think that did shape your experience in high school? Motherfucker. <laughs> Fine, we can crop it out. Um, I won't say, Fuck no, I won't say, we're leaving it. Yeah, leave it then. I, I, won't say, I won't say it drastically affected my high school experience that much because I had musician friends and stuff like that, especially towards like the later years of high school when I actually started making friends and stuff like that. But being in a band definitely helped. It definitely legitimize myself more as a musician and just having musician friends just made it better that's awesome i mean it, it, it totally makes sense and i guess because you guys had each other and you were around the same age as each other like that right. was a, a big thing for me i was 16 hanging out with people who were 28 34 like some of my best friends are in their 40s like it's yeah it's so weird but i'm sure you guys kind of had a similar experience like the the other local bands who took you guys under their wing a little bit like, was that helpful for you guys? Like, was was that kind of something in the scene that you guys were in? Yeah. I mean, there were some local bands that were around our age and stuff like that. I'm not seeing what we were playing around with for a while. And it's kind of like you want to be in this together. But it's like I said, a lot of bands just don't make it to that level like we have. 100%. 100%. Uh, yes, you see so many people fall off. It's crazy uh so adam how did you get introduced to the band because you had this american idol thing and then what is it my first question is what happened after american idol like where did that take you so uh that came right as i was uh in my last year of college i was at uh the fashion institute of technology in uh manhattan new york city and uh I went back and I had an agent that was kind of sending me out to different auditions in the city, some Broadway stuff, some commercials. And uh, my parents, of course, wanted me to finish school. And now I'm saying, I don't want to finish school. I want to, you know, be a rock star. What is this? But I was one semester away from finishing my degree. So I was like, all right, let me do this once last semester. I was studying toy design, and I actually, after school, went to work for Fisher-Price uh, in the city for six months before they just canned me because my brand got canceled. The, the show on Nickelodeon, I was working on Alvin and the Chipmunks, and uh, they canceled the Nickelodeon show, so they didn't me anymore. And I was like, what is this? I mean, you know, talk about job security uh, if they're just going to ditch me if the random cartoon doesn't do good then i might as well just take my chances performing and that was my true passion anyway so uh i went into i i played with a couple of different uh cover bands i played with a band called the influence and they're kind of just a bunch of dads having fun and playing the music that i liked rock and roll so uh, uh, a mutual friend of ours had me jump up on stage with them and i played with them for a couple of years just trying to grind out auditions here and there uh, for commercials and different shows. And eventually uh, I met a guy named Peter in, in Long Beach that was working uh, out of his home studio. And he said, you know, I love your voice. Why don't we work on a project together? And uh, that eventually turned into uh, our first album. So we were working on some songs 
And we said, we need a band to put this whole thing together if we're going to play the songs live. And that was the Metal Hawks. They said, we know these really young kids, but they're super talented. I think it could work. And we get together. We played like one song together before we realized that this is a cohesive like band. This isn't just uh, some guys that we should hire for a couple shows. This is like the band. So we took Adam Metal Hawks, made Adam and the Metal Hawks. And we started writing together, and it just worked out perfectly. So uh, that eventually turned into our first album. And and uh, right around when COVID hit is when we we put it out. So great timing there. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, we decided, well, we can't do our, can't do any shows to promote the album. We we can't you know play these songs live for anybody. So let's jump on TikTok. You know, TikTok was just. Yeah. Ex- pretty much and everybody we knew was saying go on tiktok uh, and so we pretty much didn't have a choice there was nothing else to do so so we had to jump on tiktok and we found great success luckily uh you know good for us <laughs> yeah i mean you guys were like i mean that's the way that i discovered you guys is with most of your fans probably is those videos yeah. of you guys playing guitar and smacking each other upside the head with water bottles <laughs> yeah is, it's so what funny like so uh i guess just how did that idea come about like who was the guy who came up to the dinner table one night like guys i got a plan <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't tell you which one of us it was i want to say it was either me or johnny because we had seen a couple of videos of guys you know just with the balls in their head smacking them with water bottles and stuff like that and, and we were just like you know what why don't we do that? Because they were doing it just with Back in Black. But we were like, we can do it with a whole bunch of other songs. We could do that with like Crazy Train and Sweet Child of Mine and all these classic rock songs. And then it ended up blowing up to the point where like Loudwire has an article written about us. <laughs> and then like two weeks later, there's like a hundred articles written about us. So it's like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. But, you know, that was that was kind of the beginning of us, you know, blowing up. I assume you didn't expect it to get as big as it did, right? Like, that must have been so surprising. Yeah, at, least, at least, at least not at the rate that it blew up. Like that was that was literally like overnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, funny. I mean, in the beginning, we tried a bunch of different stuff. Uh, you know, just trying to feel out the platform, and uh, I feel like TikTok is kind of very uh, trend based, especially at the time it was, uh, where everybody just jump on a trend, make their own version of it, that type of thing. Uh, and so once that that those bowls videos started to hit, it was like, well, keep cranking them out, crank them out, do every song we know. Uh, and that was kind of how we got our first million followers on on TikTok. It was like in like two months, we had a million followers just grinding out these bowl videos. Yeah, I mean, th- those videos were, I mean, very really funny. And like, I remember the thing that caught me was, I mean, number one, hilarious concept. But two, like these guys can really fucking play like this isn't just like a gimmicky thing like the even for like, I mean, relatively like simple arrangements of these songs like, I mean, Adam, your voice was insane. Like the guitar playing was awesome. I mean, it just like I feel like for some of these things, the uh, the bullshit can take away from the talent, but they Mm -hmm. just like enhanced each other. It was great. It was I mean, so much fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, it's tough because, you know, uh, especially for original music and just kind of starting up band, uh, you know, you you can't just play your original music for people online and just hope that they like it. You know, Uh, I feel like you need something to kind of get their grab their attention. Uh, And we kind of went for the the put that put the memes out and hopefully it will draw enough people in that they realize that we have original music. Uh, and they head over to Spotify and listen to our album. And so it kind of worked out that way where we got people over to YouTube. We got people over to our Instagram and it started to just overflow into all of our social media. Did you guys have a, a manager and an agent when the social media stuff started? Uh, we, we just did all of it on our own, the social media. Just, you know, meet up for band practice. All right, let's make some TikToks. What are we going to do? What's the idea? Yeah, you know, we got to make like three bowl videos, but then we got to figure out what's what's the next what's the next bowl video, you know? And see <laughs> right. that, that led to the Jack Black thing, where where we uh, you know challenged Jack Black to duet us. 
Yeah, that was, I mean, th- I was talking, oh, gosh, I was, oh, God damn it. Fucking it. All right. Uh, yeah, I was talking to um, somebody about this interview today, and I was like, and I mentioned you guys, and I said, yeah, you probably saw it with the Bulls and Jack Black, and they're like, oh, I definitely saw that video. I mean, that was huge. Yeah. Like, what was that day like for you guys, seeing Jack Black duetted you? That was surreal. I didn't think it would happen so soon because when we were doing that challenge, like getting of getting Jack Black to duet us, like that was only like six days until he actually did it. And like the day before he did it, like his whole comment section on his previous TikTok, it was swarmed with like AMH comments. Like you have to duet this band, duet AMH, AMH band, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when he finally did it, I was literally just sitting on my couch and I opened TikTok. And the first thing on my For You page is Jack Black's duet with us. And I was like, guys, guys, he did it. He duet with us. It's, and it's still surreal. You know, Jack Black still follows us. and He likes our videos every once in a while. So that's all we can ask for, man. So it's yeah. incredible. I mean, it's... Uh, a couple things I could ask for. You know, where, let's, let's... Uh, uh... where is he? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Why not you get in one of his movies now, huh? You guys starting to get into the movie game. First school of rock too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Should have gotten into the Mario movie while we had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The way that thing is is looking review wise, maybe you guys were smart to stay out. I don't know. Maybe who knows? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it looks good. We'll oh, see. I'm definitely seeing it. Yeah. There's like, there's no way I'm not. That's gonna be even if it's a bomb, it's gonna be so much fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean. Johnny, being the guy who started this thing when you were 10 and now kind of seeing all the, the progress you guys have made and how big it's gotten, like, how does that feel being like you've devoted pretty much half your life to this project? <laughs> no, it's it's crazy. I would have never expected. I've always had the dream having a huge band or this and that. So it's it's insane how big it how big it became. And who knows where the future takes us, you know, I think hopefully it'll just keep on going. And credit to 10-year-old Johnny for picking out a good enough name. <laughs> Dude, I would have been like the, the plunger toilets. I would have been something so stupid. It's all, you know, every name sounds stupid until it becomes, uh, you know, something legendary. You know, I feel like Led Zeppelin, like, what What even is that? A Led Zeppelin? It doesn't even make sense. Oh, the Beatles. I mean, come on. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, the Beatles? What you named after a bug? What is this? Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shit. Like Rush, Rush. Like, what are you in a hurry? What, what's that name? <laughs> I mean, Greta Van Fleet literally named it after their elderly neighbor. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're like one of the biggest like rock bands of their generation. I mean, it's uh-huh. you never know exactly. All right. Um, we should have named our band after one of our grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> the Ethelus. That would have been great. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so Griffin, you just got added to the band within the last year. What's your experience been like since you uh, joined these guys? We well, we've had a lot of opportunities to see the world with these guys in the last couple of months. It's been it's been pretty amazing. We were just in um in Europe in the summer. We went to Switzerland and Sweden. Went to Italy and Germany and got to see a lot of the country. And it was it was uh. It's a pretty amazing experience, and our reception was met with madness. You know, people loved us over there, um, and it was uh, pretty amazing to see that because I, I mean, I was confident that we were going to have that kind of reception, but it was just nonstop engagement across the board. Everybody was just so invested in what we were doing, and I just, I mean, I, I it's it, you really gave you that vote of confidence it's like that's the thing that keeps you going is that kind of is that kind of show just to be like yeah they they're all right we got some magic going here i think people want to see this going forward you know it's uh so I, a lot of those opportunities have come from being in the band so far i mean we did canada we did a canadian tour in may before we went to europe wow. and uh wow. so so with the things have been cooking you know we're also recovering from covid land so everybody's they're still moving up but this this coming year is gonna be it's gonna be good i know it's gonna be good oh i think you guys have like nothing but like a giant room to just like grow into i mean it's 
like, especially with all the, the progress you guys have made. And then, I mean, last album was in 2020. You got a couple singles out. I mean, you know, no Nostradamus yep. here, but it says like an album and a tour soon, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> We're, we've been working on this new album uh, and it's pretty much done. Backwards is part of this new album. And, uh, you know, we got a lot more where that came from. A lot of these songs are super awesome. We've been playing them live and getting some good feedback on it. So we're excited to share some new singles. We have a Christmas song in the works that's coming <laughs> oh. the year. Uh, look forward to that. That's going to be awesome, too. So we got some great things coming and and a bunch of dates on the calendar for next year that we're excited to announce. So it's going to be great. Dude, I'm I'm so excited. Like it's I don't know because I'm all of the music that I like is like old man shit. Like I've been told that I have old man taste like my <laughs> entire life. Like I got yes, posters, Pink Floyd posters and like comedians. I got like Don Rickles and George Carlin posters, which you guys probably don't know. But like, ask your grandpa. Oh, I love George Carlin. He's Carlin's one of my favorites. Oh, nice. Probably my, probably my favorite comedian of all time. Oh, Carlin's the best. But yeah, so all of my like the shit that I like is old. So now I'm getting more into like new rock bands that still kind of sound old, like right. Greta Van Fleet, like you guys, like uh, Dirty Honey, you know, that kind yep. of stuff. And so, uh, and it's great that you guys are producing all this awesome music that for people who like classic rock, but now all the people are done or dead. Like yeah. we still kind of get that that great music. Yeah. Yeah. But we're we're proud to, you know, wear our influences on our sleeve. Like, you know, we're we're not hiding the fact that we love bands like Van Halen and Kiss and Twisted Sister, Queen, you know, just so many classic rock bands are kind of put into our repertoire. And then when we create original music, it's just influenced by all these bands. You could kind of hear the the passion that we have for them. And so we're trying to bring that kind of feeling and that emotion that you get from listening to these bands like Rush and uh, and bring them to a new generation, uh, you know, that the TikTok generation, let's say, that uh, maybe have not heard any of these songs or maybe they heard uh, like the SpongeBob version, you know, but they, <laughs> they're they're waiting for maybe a new a new band to come around. So that's that's hopefully us. What's yeah. the uh, age demographic of the people coming out to see? Was it a lot of like people around our age, or is it a lot of like gray hair in the audience? <laughs> it's a, kind of a I mix. Of, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, especially if you look on social media, you can see the kind of the stats uh, of like who's watching videos. And uh, the, the the range is kind of uh, very broad. It's, you know, 18 to 25 is, is a big one. But then uh, you have like the 20 to 35 range is also pretty big. And the the sides of the margins are, are uh, you know, not too small either. So it's it's got a big bell curve going on. And uh, this guy went to college. Yeah, yeah you know, bell- <laughs> good one to know. I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah it's a, it's just been cool like you know we, we don't really uh alienate any kind of group from our music you know you, you could be new to rock or you could be a rock veteran and i think we have something for everybody that's amazing i if you've never heard of these guys adam and the metal hawks amh go check them out uh we got about a minute left i'll do my plugs uh at the end uh if you guys got anything to promote go right ahead uh, yeah, if you guys want to come check out our music on Spotify, YouTube, uh, we have a bunch of awesome, funny videos that involve rock and roll on our social medias, uh, AMH Band or Adam and the Metal Hawks, whatever platform you're looking for. I'm sure you'll be able to find us through that. Uh, and just uh, if I may, the the best way to support anybody online, uh, you know, be it a comedian, a musician, uh, anybody that you'd like to support. It's absolutely free. Hit the like button. Hit the share. Tell tell somebody that you know about us uh, or about whoever uh, you want to support. And it's all free, uh, you know, as well as just buying merch or whatever. There are free options to help out uh, whoever you want to uh, support online. So uh, we yeah. appreciate all the fans and uh, we'll see you at a show, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go yeah, check these guys shows. out. Speaking of shows, also, we are doing a Christmas show 
in New York City for all of our New York City fans. Hi, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, there were some difficulties with the technology and the recording uh, to, that cut off Ryan. But what Ryan was saying was they're doing a December 9th Christmas show in New York. So if you're in the New York area, go onto their website, onto their social media, and check out where that's going to be. It's going to be on December 9th, a Christmas show. They're going to be doing their new Christmas song, which you should watch out for. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So go check that out if you're in New York. As far as uh, me and the podcast, my name is Spencer Gordman. You can find me at Spencer underscore Gordman on TikTok and Instagram, as well as Spencer Gordman on Facebook. And the podcast, uh, which is on their way up, on that's spelled T-H-E-I-R is how you spell there. Uh, you can find that on Instagram and Twitter or the social medias. And subscribe wherever you're listening to right now. And if you want to watch the video, you can watch on Spotify and YouTube and see all of our beautiful faces from the episode. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for Adam and the Metal Hawks. Uh, it was Adam and Griffin and Ryan and Johnny for being on the podcast. And I hope you listening have a great rest of your day. <laughs>